The importance of the mental preparation in sport and exercise has become more and more popular. Just think about uh, Adam Undra, who is considerably one of the best, or if not the best, climber in the world, uh, has now been developing a short series of documentaries called Beyond Focus, in which he's talking about his mental aspects and mental preparations during the Olympics. But while these anecdotal videos can be motivational and inspirational, mental preparation has almost never been addressed in a systematic way. Do you want to go deeper into it with me? So mental preparation is um, defined in psychology as this is long, let me read it. Those cognitive, emotional and behavioral strategies that athletes and teams use to arrive at an ideal performance state or condition that is related to optimal psychological states and peak performance for either competition or practice. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> OK, but so does this actually work? Various studies in the last 30 years showed that it was the case that when athletes were giving mental strategies, they were performing better. But when the experimenters were testing which was the strategy that worked the best, uh, they saw that there was no real strategy that worked better than the other. And in fact, it emerged that the, the efficacy of the strategy was dependent both on the task and on the personality of the athlete. I think this is an interesting result. Because when we see athletes talking about their mental preparation and uh, um, strategies that they employ, uh, we often see uh, an homogeneous um, dis description, um, a really coherent and often it reflects positive outcomes or positive feelings, how to reinforce them. And when they uh, show negative emotions, it's just to show how to overcome those. I believe all these statements are true and valid, but I also think that social desirability here is impacting or shedding more light, let's say, on some aspects of the mental training uh, than others. And in the end, I believe that this describes an oversimplistic uh, representation of mental training. Going back to the research, Yuri Hanin uh, developed the concept of zone of optimal functioning to describe the link between um, mental preparation and um, individual personality differences. In fact, in his decades of studies, he showed that the peak in performance were uh, associated to optimal emotional states that were um, idiosyncratic depending on the personality of the athlete. The zone of optimal performance is a recipe of various emotions activating together with a varying degree of intensity. Therefore, optimal mental training means uh, all these strategies and exercises that athletes can do to tune their own emotions to stay in the range of their optimal performance. This that you see now is an example of the Borg CR scale that I made for myself in the competition setting. In blue, you see my zone of best performance and in red, the zone of worst performance. Note that you have both positive and negative emotions in balance that could be either functional or dysfunctional. For example, aggressiveness, uh, which is uh, negative in balance usually, uh, could be extremely functional in some specific contexts. Think about, for example, um, team sports or in some specific martial arts is actually a way to score some points in uh, competitions. Use your aggressive feelings, boy. At the same time, cheerfulness in some situation can be considered as dysfunctional. Bloody cheerful. You can see here that aggressiveness is not associated for me in competition settings to peak performance. I discovered that I tend to redirect aggressiveness towards myself, especially when uh, it's of high levels. And this impacts my confidence, uh, my focus and the ability of enjoying the moment, which also um, impacts my performance. The fact that cheerfulness and being nice is associated to peak performance for me in uh, competition settings can be due to my lack of competition experience, uh, but this is what emerged in those few occasions. 
I still don't know if I should work on decreasing the levels of these emotions. What I can say for sure is that if I were to do this kind of graph for my strength training and my training on the wall, these uh, elements would be completely different. When I'm doing strength training, the uh, effect of aggressiveness and cheerfulness are actually inverted. And when I'm doing training on the wall, um, the, the effect of these variables are actually in the middle. So how do you discover your optimal recipe? The best way is to have a training journal. While having a journal has shown to have an astonishing number of positive outcomes, if this is the only thing that you're interested about and for the moment, you don't really have to have an overly complex journal. Even the simplest one can be enough in uh, showing uh, the, um, the profile. The most important fact in this case is to be sure to record all the situations that you're targeting. So for example, if, you're, uh, if you want to discover your profile when you are projecting, it's important that you record all these emotions uh, in all the situations, in all the attempts, because we have the tendency to focus on extremely salient situations. So for example, when you send, and also when, um, when we have particularly bad moods or we're particularly hyped. And so we tend to forget to process less influence or less impactful situations. Now, when you have your profile, you can exploit this information at your own benefit. This means you will need to develop and train your ability to first assess your actual emotional state to assess the necessities of the um, of the specific situation and three employ the right strategy to tune yourself into the zone of optimal performance music is one of the most intuitive ways to um, tune your emotions into the optimal state yana gambrit which is uh, the best competition climber in the world was seen to be listening to music right before the speed climbing during the Olympics. Same goes for motivational phrases Just do it! and stress managing techniques. The thing that I would like to stress more is that you shouldn't have a routine and a strategy that is only targeting your ability and capacity to push your limits, to commit, to go harder, <laughs> to pull more. You should have a um, strategy that is flexible enough to be adapted to the situation that you actually need. And that's it for the first part of mental preparation. I still have lots to say, but I, I hope you found this interesting so far. I actually have some different playlists that I use for training and for projecting as well. Do you also do that? If you want to share some music, I think that would be nice to, to look into uh, what people use to, to change their moods. And in the meantime, uh, like, share and subscribe if you want more content like this. And I will see you in the next video and stay psyched. Mm. Dance a female. <laughs>